Okay, so uh, in this session, we're gonna discuss some operational best practices. Um, so um, one important thing to realize is that um, you need to make sure that logging is enabled on the controller, right? So, uh, and generally syslog in the, uh, in the platform can be exported to nine different destinations via profiles. The profile number nine is there for Copilot. So let me just try to show you what I'm talking about. Again, we're gonna go to the controller. And if I go to uh, settings and there is logging, this is where the syslog is. So the enabled profile is number nine. Number nine is the one that points to the Copilot. This is the IP address of the Copilot in my setup. And obviously port for five, UDP 5000 for um, syslog. However, if I wanted to enable any other profile, I'm able to enable it and I'll need to um, give the profile a name and uh, provide some details of that um, server and some uh, whether I'm using TCP or UDP um, for that. Again, this is only in the case where I want to, to stream those syslog messages to it for additional uh, syslog servers. The other one that is very important is NetFlow. Uh, today, the platform is capable of only sending NetFlow to a single destination. And again, the one that is enabled by default is Copilot. And this is the one uh, we recommend. Um, but you can, you're still able to if you wanted to edit and send to a SIM or any other platform, this is still a possibility. So this is what I was referencing here um, for NetFlow being enabled. Again, it has um, uh, that port 31 to 83. And um, again, this is what, um, the gateways will be the gateways will be actually sending the data, the NetFlow data to towards Copilot. Another very important one is the alert configuration. So um, let me just try to show it to you on Copilot. I think this is becoming um, very important. So you will realize that by default. There are certain alerts that are already pre-configured for you um, if you're running a recent version. So in, in the, in the uh, lab setup, I'm running 314. And so the global control plane health, they basically reference the controller and co-pilot. And what they're saying, if the CPU of the controller or the memory or even disk free, if any of these conditions are actually happening for the controller and co-pilot, you can um, basically send an alert to a particular recipient, and then you can have different recipients for different alerts. Again, this comes pre-configured for you. It's an OR condition for any of these, and we recommend that uh, you put the relevant um, distribution list, or even uh, if you're doing integration with um, some um, like help desk tools or ticketing tools, then you can um, actually uh, use the webhook uh, integration. For that, when you go to recipients, you can either add an email address or you can configure a webhook. Again, both of these are options uh, depending on what you want. And the other alert that's already there is for the, all the gateways. If there is some packets being exceeded, meaning there's a drop or there's memory issues, or any of the gateway status changed, like the gateway was down, it became up across all the interfaces, then again, maybe you want to send that alert to someone else. This is the, the alert that's already pre-configured for you. If you're doing, for example, um, there's, an, there's a, another one on the memory uh, swap. So um, this is again, an indicator that something is not going well. There's a threat IQ alert. There's another alert. I mean, you can you can go and create any alert. For example, um, you can do it on the BGP status, on a connection status. Like if you have an IPsec connection or a BGP, you can do it any on any uh, of the other metrics. Um, and again, you can decide 
who to alert so that um and again if you want to have a different alert for each gateway separate alert or you want to consolidate the alerts like if you have a situation where 10 gateways are down then do you want to get 10 different alerts or do you want to uh, summarize them or consolidate them into a single alert so this is a bit on alerting this is very very important just make sure that you've set this up accordingly this will help you um, be notified in time of what's happening in your environment and be able to react in a timely manner. RBAC, so um, RBAC again is role-based access control and we always historically in the controller had a concept of a permission group. Think of a permission group as a role and a permission group has a um, a set of permissions, you can also constrain that permission group to a set of accounts, uh, and then you will add users to those permission groups. Um, and traditionally, users could be authenticated in two ways, either locally on the controller or using SAML, which is more recommended if you are an enterprise and you already have a source of identity. So instead of creating local users on the controller, uh, it will be better to integrate that with um, your existing identity provider. Again, these are very important, um, be it for auditing, be it for making sure that um, like a employees, depending on their uh, roles, have the right access. And what's interesting is that this has recently been extended to copilot so let me explain if you go to copilot and um we'll find user access traditionally it was only for the controller but now when you configure a permission group you can provide the controller permissions which are all the historically the um what has been available on the controller so you can, from a single pane, you can do it for the controller. Maybe you want to give them access to useful tools, for example, within the controller. But you can also go to Copilot and say, I want that particular group, which is the permission group, to see, for example, under airspace, um, to see only the topology. Or maybe not the full topology, but the overview. It's important to understand that when we go to Copilot, it's done a bit differently. On the controller, it's you. the user will always see all the menus. However, when they try to attempt the action, this might or might not work, depending if they have the privileges. On Copilot, if you give them only overview access, the user will not see, will only see that particular option in the menu. All the other options will be hidden for them. Okay? So this is a bit again how you configure the permission group um, and then logically you will add the users um, you will add the user to that particular group and um, and again you could do it the user could be local on the controller or you could have that user um, within an uh, identity provider Uh, another good best practice is to protect your controller and co-pilot uh, being web applications uh, by putting them behind a load balancer and um, uh, an application load balancer. And there's, there are a few benefits to doing this. Generally, the application load balancer like in AWS has a security group associated with it. So you can only limit your enterprise public IP address so that the whole world is not able to access your um, load balancer and thus the controller and copilot. The other advantage of the application load balancer is the ability to offload or terminate SSL at the load balancer. Uh, this would offload that function from the controller. A third benefit is the ability to attach a web application firewall and um, basically uh, protect your um, controller and co-pilot from things like SQL injection or cross-site scripting. 
Um, and on the WAF, you could use uh, managed rules. This could be AWS managed rules or F5 or FortiGate, um, whoever your preferred WAF vendor is. Then the other, the other um, remaining piece of the puzzle is the controller will have a security group and you can say, I only want to allow the ALB to communicate with me so that no user can bypass the ALB and try to get to the controller. Remember the controller has a public IP address. Now for the communication between the controller and the gateways, it is an IP to IP communication. And we have a feature which is the security group management by which the controller manages its own security groups as well as the security groups of the spokes to lock them down to only enable TLS communication between the gateways and the controller. So I just wanted to highlight that the, the ALB, the WAF, and everything I've discussed is for the users, for malicious users who are to protect your controller and co-pilot from malicious users who are trying to um, cause harm uh, versus the path between the um, gateways and controller as well as co-pilot is um, a direct IP to IP path. A bit on um, sizing, so we generally recommend um, for the controller a minimum four core instance. Again, always reach out to your uh, solution engineers or solution architects whenever you are um, uh, deploying in production. Um, now, one thing to note that if you are resizing your controller, there is no effect. Even if you turn off the controller, there is no effect for data plane. The only effect is if you are using user VPN, the only effect you will see is for users who want to authenticate. But for any connected users, for any data plane, for any traffic that goes between your VPCs, there is no effect. The only effect is for users who need to authenticate leveraging user VPN. Again, connected users will not be affected. It's always a good practice to back up the controller before performing any upgrades to make sure you do not lose any, any configuration or state. So gateway sizing is a, a very big topic. And again, always urge you to, to ping your solution architects, solution engineers. There are some benchmarks posted in, 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 in the link. And um, so the gateway selection, meaning the instance size affects the throughput. Also, if you if you whether you want to do high performance encryption or not is another big factor. Um, and you can always um, try to figure out the MTU across the path. Um, and again, there are some, some details on secure egress, uh, but in a nutshell, if you really need, if you're really looking to deploy in production, always uh, bring your solution engineers or solution architects. Now, in terms of upgrades and updates, um, generally there are two two types of upgrades. One is the software upgrades. The other are the image upgrades. So this, this applies for both the controller and the gateway. Um, and what this is doing is, um, this is generally a hitless process, meaning you can, even the gateways when they are upgraded, the data plane is not affected. Um, I still recommend always testing, I always recommend having a testing environment and and even planning for maintenance windows. However, in reality, uh, most of the upgrades are hitless in nature. The image upgrade is a bit um, more intrusive because we are replacing the whole AMI um, to a newer version. So this one is generally much less frequent and it does incur a traffic disruption. We are not here changing the software version of Aviatrix. We are more replacing the underlying image. Okay, security patches and software patches are hitless, meaning they follow the logic of the software upgrade. 
And security patches are always released when um, security updates to the underlying components um, become available, uh, similarly for um, software patches.